Hi, I'm Cassie Calabrese and would like to present a case of histoplasmosis complicating TNF inhibitor therapy. The case is a 53-year-old male with long-standing seropositive rheumatoid arthritis that was well controlled on adalimumab and oral methotrexate 20 milligrams. He presented with fevers, rigors, night sweats, and shortness of breath that had been progressive over one month. In the emergency room, this is his CT scan of his chest that revealed diffuse lymphadenopathy, new lung nodules, and also splenomegaly. He was admitted to the hospital and underwent a bronchoscopy where a bronchialveolar lavage was positive for histoplasma antigen and a transbronchial biopsy had a positive fungal stain, all consistent with a diagnosis of disseminated histoplasmosis for which he was started on IV amphotericin and transitioned to oral itraconazole with plans to treat this infection for at least 12 months. What about his rheumatoid arthritis? Two weeks after starting antifungal therapy, his rheumatoid arthritis was active. Of course, he had stopped his prior immunosuppressive therapy. He was started on sulfasalazine and hydroxychloroquine. Two months into antifungal therapy, his urine histoplasma antigen appropriately was decreasing. His rheumatoid arthritis disease activity was improved, but still active. Time went on. He ultimately completed 12 months of oral antifungal therapy. His urine histoantigen remained negative, and he was started on abatacept subcutaneous weekly, although had incomplete response with his rheumatoid arthritis and was ultimately switched to etanercept and achieved low disease activity. This was a challenging case. What do we know about histoplasmosis risk and TNF inhibition? In the United States, histo complicates TNF inhibitor therapy three times more often than tuberculosis does, and mortality rate is up to 20%, making a awareness, prompt diagnosis, and treatment key. It's endemic in parts of Midwestern US, but also other parts of the world. And there are no recommendations for routine serologic screening or antifungal prophylaxis in patients living in endemic areas on TNF inhibitor therapy. Think about symptoms that might present unexplained fever, sweats, cough, fatigue, and weight loss. Educate patients living or traveling to endemic areas about high-risk activities, including gardening or working in the soil. Suggestive symptoms like unexplained pneumonia within the past two years in someone on TNF inhibitor therapy consider histoplasmosis. When it's treated appropriately and patient clinically improves, most patients can be safely restarted on biologic therapy, including TNF inhibitor therapy, with close monitoring. Thank you.